This tutorial will show you how to build the CFS within OpenStat Kit. I'll first demonstrate cloning and building the CFS bundle that is released by NASA, and then show how that build environment has been configured for OpenStat Kit. A future tutorial will go into more depth with the build system configuration. The CFS framework is the bottom two layers of the CFS architecture, and it is maintained by a NASA control board. Each API and implementation have their own GitHub repository. Note that each platform layer component API has three implementations, but they're considered starting points for a flight mission. A user can't do much with just a framework, so the CFS bundle was created to provide a starter system. The CFS bundle has its own GitHub repository that contains the CFE framework components as Git submodules. It includes three apps that provide a runtime environment so a complete system can be built. These are called lab apps because they are designed to be used in a development environment as opposed to a flight system. The scheduler app sends software bus messages at predefined times, and these messages can be used to wake up other apps. Command ingest receives UDP messages containing software bus messages that it can send on the software bus. Telemetry output subscribes to messages on the software bus and sends them over UDP to a remote system. The bundle make files are configured to build the bundle on a Linux system. The bundle website has a link to a Python command and telemetry system. I will not be covering this system in the tutorial, but wanted to make you aware of it. I'm now in an Ubuntu virtual machine. My browser's at the CFS bundle URL, which is github.com slash NASA slash CFS. And I have a terminal window open for the installation. The bundle website has uh, instructions for setup and for building and running. So we're gonna follow those. First, we need to clone the Git repository. Next, we're going to change directory into the CFS directory. We're going to do a git submodule init. And then we're going to do a git submodule update. And next, we're going to be doing a copying the default make file and the definition files into the proper place so the make can be run in the build and run steps. First, we copy the make file. And next, we're going to copy the uh, CMake sample defs file. OK, now we've got everything in place. We're going to do the make instruction. And this is going to do the prep steps for um, it's out discovering now all the things that need to be built. We're going to do a make to do the build. And then finally, we'll do a make install, and that'll actually put the executable into the proper directory. Okay, and now we're ready to run. So everything's built. And we're ready to run the CFS. So now what just happened is it's this is the this terminal window is actually displaying all the event messages that were displayed. And as you can see, we're loading and starting CI lab, loading TO lab, and loading scheduler lab. So these are all the apps that were loaded during the startup, and there's some other startup event messages here. If you recall. The setup procedure involved copying sample defs into the CFS base directory. There's two key files in this directory that we'll take a look at. One is targets.cmake, and the other one is cpu underscore cfe underscore es startup.script. So the targets.cmake actually specifies what's going to be built. So if you notice these three lines, we have the set the name to cpu1, we have our app list, which was ci lab, to lab, and scheduler. And then we also have a file list. And this file list will indicate which files should be copied from the sample defs directory to the compact flash or the slash cf directory that we'll look at it in a second. And notice also there is a mission global apps list. And I didn't talk about these, but there is a sample app and a sample live. And what this list specifies are, are apps and libraries that can be built that can be used across multiple targets. So our target directory is um, the compact flash disk. So this is in CFS build XE 
CPU-1, Compact Flash. So if we go up to the CPU-1, we see that's where our core.cpu1 was that we executed. And in the CF directory, we see that there's a CFE ES startup script. So let's take a look at the startup script. Now this is the CPU version in the sample depths. So this is the one that gets the CPU underscore gets one gets stripped off and it gets copied over here. And this specifies what's going to get loaded. So we see sample live, sample app, and then the three apps that I had mentioned already. Here's the OpenSAT kit architecture. At the platform layer, it runs on Linux, just like the bundle. At the application layer, there are many pre-installed apps. However, I'm only showing the three apps that provide a runtime environment. OpenSAT Kit has its own versions of these apps, and I'll explain why in the runtime app tutorial. The command ingest and telemetry output apps interface with the Cosmos command and telemetry server. The Cosmos telemetry viewer displays pages containing values from telemetry packets. Note, this is not meant to represent the terminal window. The terminal window displays output that would go to a serial port in an embedded device. Event messages get sent to both the terminal window and to the telemetry output app where they eventually get routed to a telemetry page. Here's a look at OpenSAT Kit's directory. The blue CFS directories are nearly identical to CFS bundle directories with one exception. The sample defs directory has been renamed to OSK defs and it still contains the targets.cmake and the startup script. The apps directory contains source code for each app and I've only listed the runtime apps. The build directory is managed by the CMake process, and just like the CFS bundle, the CPU1 directory contains the CFS executable, and all of the app's object files are contained in the CF directory. Now we'll take a look at OpenSAT Kit's versions of targets.cmake and the CFE startup script. Here's OpenSAT Kit's targets.cmake file. As you can see, we set the name to CPU1, our app list is much longer than the CFS bundle app list. And these are all the libraries and apps that are built. And then here's our file list of the files that are copied from OSK definitions directory into the slash CF directory. And that's longer as well. And I'll get into some of these other files in a different tutorial. Now our startup script is much longer as well. And these are all the apps and libraries loaded on default. And notice that after the first exclamation point, the rest of the file is comments. When you install OpenSAT Kit, you can immediately run the CFS because it was built as part of the installation. OpenSAT Kit is designed to be a runtime interface to the CFS that is useful for learning about the CFS and for testing and operating a CFS system. I'll start the CFS, which creates a new terminal window and runs the CFS. And here we can see a lot of print messages and event messages being output to the terminal window. Other than the automated create hello world app tool, coding and unit testing is not is done independent of OpenSAT kit. So now I'm going to stop the CFS and I'm going to make a change to the file manager app. File manager has a very simple main loop in which it just pens indefinitely for a software bus message. And the scheduler is set up to send a request housekeeping packet to file manager every four seconds. So I'm going to put a printf statement after the software bus pen and we should see this get output to the terminal every four seconds. Note that this is a printf statement that goes only to the terminal and it's not an event message so we won't see it appear in the flight software event message window. So I'm going to save this and now I'm going to open another terminal window so I can build the CFS. We'll change directory to the OpenSAT kit CFS now I don't need to do a make prep like I did with the CFS bundle because we haven't changed or introduced any new files or directories. And also when I did the follow the make the CFS bundle instructions, it did a make and then a make install. You actually only need to do in this situation a make install and it will automatically discover files that need to be built and do the make. And then it will do the installation. So if we increase this window, we can see that the, um, we should see that file manager got, they did get, it did get built. And then we'll also see that at the end, oops, I gotta reduce it, that um, it did do the installation as well. So now we're ready to start the CFS again. And this time we should see 
the message come out every four seconds. Hello, this is File Manager. And as you can see, this is coming out every four seconds and it's not coming into the event message. So this concludes how to build the CFS. Hope it was helpful and thanks for tuning in.